Welcome to the GP Lama YouTube channel and to a standalone video on this, the Power to Max NGCO mountain bike power meter. You may have seen it in other power meter review videos that I've done as I've used it as a baseline to compare other power meters too. The Power to Max NGCO MTB wasn't the focus of those other review videos, so anybody searching online for my experience with that meter wouldn't find anything unless they dug down into other reviews. So that changes today with this video. So Power to Max is one of those brands that people just seem to love. If you've got a Power to Max meter on your bike, you'll know what I'm talking about. Power to Max themselves, I wouldn't say are on top of their game for advertising, social media, or pro tour sponsorships, but they do have a product that simply works and works well. And that alone is why people do like them. Jumping to the technical specifications, and this is a spider-based power meter with multiple options to choose from depending on the crank set that you've got on your bike. So there's the first hurdle in selecting this power meter. You need to choose the one that is compatible or get a crank set that's compatible and do some swapping over. I'll show you more about that in a moment. Claim power accuracy of the NGCO model is plus or minus 2%. You can pay an additional 100 euro on purchase to get a plus or minus 1% verified unit. And in my experience, owning two of these, one for road, one for mountain, the NGCO with plus or minus 2% have been brilliant. Power stats there up to 3000 watts, 250 RPM. Battery is a CR2450 coin cell battery with up to 300 hours of battery life. Again, with the two NGCO units that I have here with the removable batteries, I can't remember the last time I changed the batteries out of them. So 300 hours, even half of that is pretty damn good, lasting a very long time. And plus and Bluetooth, and the data you'll get from these is power, so total power and cadence. There are additional paid upgrades for the NGCO models where you can get left, right balance and pedal smoothness for 50 euro each as an unlock. There's also a demo period for those if you want to unlock those features and use them before paying for them. Temperature compensation is a bit tricky. For the NGCO models, it's listed as, yes, it has temperature compensation, but also on the more expensive NG, not the NGCO version, Powdermax have what they claim TC+, which is actively compensated, so active temperature compensation, not just temperature compensation. Again, in my experience riding these indoors and out on road and mountain, they've actually been very, very reliable across different temperature zones, probably due to the auto calibration, which seems to keep things in line. Oval or Q-ring compatibility, to be honest, the information on this is a little sketchy. I couldn't get a definitive answer from their website. So if you're looking at using one of these power meters with non-round rings, check with Power to Max first. Ingress protection rating, again, something I couldn't find on their website. Looking for an IPX7 or IPX67, wasn't listed. In their FAQ, they just said, yes, it is waterproof. Configuration firmware, registration, diagnostics, etc., is done via the Power to Max app, which isn't really doing that well in the App Store, getting 1.3 out of five stars. And to be honest, my experience with the app has been horrible. I recently had to reach out to Power to Max to get a test flight version of the app. I believe they're working on it. We haven't seen a new version yet, but uh, do be aware of the app. It's kind of sucky right about now. A claim weight of 132 grams with the spider that I had came in at 131 on my scales, but we do have to factor in removing a direct mount chainring, which is pretty light, installing the spider, another chainring, and chainring bolts. There's around 100 grams penalty for doing that, and we'll cover that in just a moment. Warranty by default is two years. I believe you can get up to five years with an additional cost. Onto the pricing, which has just been adjusted as I'm recording this video. And just for the Spider alone, it comes in at 590 US, 640 euros, and 1100 Aussie dollars. Remembering you do have to factor in the cost of a new chainring and chainring bolts, and possibly some tools to get it installed. The crank set I installed this power meter on is a Shimano XTR M9100 series, and it just so happens to be the same crank set that I reviewed for the Stages dual sided mountain bike power meter. But going from a single direct mount chainring to a full spider based power meter and chainring, there's going to be a weight penalty. Let's get this on the scales and find out what that is. The chainring that's being removed is a direct mount 32 tooth coming in at 72 grams. And that's being replaced with a 34 tooth wolf tooth drop stop ST. That weighing in at 45 grams. The Power Max Ngco Shimano 104 MTB weighing in 131, so 176. 11 grams with the bolts, totaling 187 grams, meaning the difference of 115 grams with this power meter installed on the mountain bike. Okay, with the chain ring installed and the chain ring bolts torqued down to spec, all looking good. I had to purchase myself a Shimano TL FC41 tool to get the direct mount chain ring off that crank set. And yes, these are crows in the background. Let's put on some music as I speed this up to get through the rest of the install.
All right, a little more involved than just putting on a set of pedals, which I'll be doing as well with this. But there we go, job done. Okay, jumping ahead to the crank set on the bike, just checking the clearance of the 34 tooth, and that's about as close as I want it to be. And a chain line check, 52 millimeters with my rough measurement here. All looking good. Okay, you know the deal with these reviews by now. Short sequence here of me actually riding the power meter, putting it through its paces in good conditions, in, well, not so great conditions, but at least the sun was out. And still not great conditions here with a bit of a slippery descent, but also in some really, really fun, dusty, dry conditions here, just north of Ballarat. Okay, riding out of the way, let's look at the important stuff, the data. Jumping now to my favorite website, the DCR Analyzer tool, where we can compare multiple power meters as an overlay and see how the data stacks up. Here we have the Elite Dorado XR with the mountain bike hook up to that, Powered Max in Juco mountain bike, Asioma A2, that's the code name I put in there just in case I got a screenshot and didn't put the Pro MX there before they were released. This is back in November. Uh, everything working pretty well. Now I did note that uh, a lot of the time with the mountain bike on the trainer, I think what's going on here with the Doretto XR at the time is that slight movement in the drivetrain. We're dropping a few watts. The Doretto XR is typically excellent when it comes to power measurements. So factor that in. But what we're looking at here is the Power Max Injuco up against the Asioma Pro MXs. Steady state. 224, 228, 230, or 228.98, 230.5. So again, really, really close. That's all looking good. No drifting either way. Uh, into the short sprint here, uh, that is the Powder Max and Geco and the Asiomas within nine watts of each other. Uh, the Elite Dorado XR coming to the party one second later. Just a little bit under that. Again, I put that down to the loss through the flex of the bike, especially on the Dorado XR where it sits. What else have we got here? Uh, the overs and unders, 218, 225, 222.99, let's call it 223, any other day of the week. The ASI ohm is here, just dropping a little bit lower. I think that's probably more accurate than anything else. So the PowerMax Ngico is doing a little smoothing, like the trainer is. Uh, but the numbers there are looking fine. Onto a ride outdoors, PowerMax Ngico, mountain bike, Asiyama Pro MX. Steady state here near the Ballarat Airport. Nice long section of gravel slash road. Uh, 257, 256.5. Again, no separation, nothing looking crazy there. This section through here with a small sprint, uh, 206, 209. Let's take a close look at that sprint. Again, the spikes or the peak power is just one recording interval off, thanks to our one hertz recording. Uh, 1175 and 1153, pretty close with those two. Some 30 second or 20 second over and unders outdoors on some pretty rough road, 250 versus 248.69. That's within spec. Then just riding along after that, 208, 207. No major differences between those two there that I can see. And the last data set, another longer ride outdoors, Power Max in Geco, Asioma. Well, I've got, again, they called A2 on the screen there, but they're the Pro MX. We'll grab this climb here early on in the ride, 206.95, caught 207, 207.78. Later in the ride with lots of stops and starts through here. Let's grab this. 220, 221 later on with no zeros performed during the ride. And we're looking at almost three hours into the ride from there and still lining up nicely. Jumping down to the cadence, so I haven't looked at cadence yet, but again, that's fine. Cadence is wrong, power's gonna be wrong too. I'll grab this climb section through here, 85, 85. And again, later in the ride, 80.75, 81 with a few ups and downs. Look, you get the picture. This thing just works and has been a reliable source of power for me to compare other power meters to. That really is the short of it. Okay, with data like that, you can understand why this unit is staying on the mountain bike and will be used to keep everyone else honest. Everyone else being Favero, Garmin, Look, SRM, and any other company who wants to make an off-road power meter. Now onto some of the issues with this unit before getting into spider versus pedals, which one should you go for? The issues that I've seen and haven't encountered myself mostly with these meters is the battery door being ripped off. It is only a little rubber grommet thing. They do sell spares, but I have seen reports online of people losing those. Something that hasn't happened to me yet. Now to a topic that could be a whole video on itself being spider versus pedals for mountain bike power meters. I was going to call this spider versus pedals versus crank, but only having these stages dual sided and what's going on with stages at the moment, let's just call it spider versus pedals. Starting off with spider. I think the biggest hurdle with choosing a spider is the compatibility. There are a lot of options to go for, and you'll have to choose the spider that matches your crank set at the bottom bracket, get extra chain rings, and have the tools to get the installation done. 
Now it's commonly stated that spider power meters are better protected given where they are on the bike. To that I would say, kind of, maybe. Any big pedal strike or rock hit or crank smash is still going to transfer force through the cranks, through the spider and into those strain gauges. So they're not completely immune to being damaged. But any kind of hit that's gonna damage it in that way, you're gonna be worrying about a lot of other things, not just your power meter. Uh, one upside to the spider is that there is one battery not two to worry about. Now on the power to max specific side of things, the app, I've mentioned, I've got some words written here, but let's just summarize that is it's terrible. Power to max really do need to fix that up. It should be quite a cheap and easy thing to do, given it's software, hopefully they can get that sorted. Registration and activation with power to max does require a code to activate the power meter, which is a bit of a hurdle that I don't really think needs to exist. You've got the hardware, the app is connected to the hardware, it's not counterfeit should just be able to activate it, talk to it, and away you go. Now recently, for whatever reason, my power to max Njika on the road bike had reset itself and needed to be re-registered to be activated. Now, of course, I couldn't find my activation code, so I needed to reach out to power to max support, who then got back to me with that code. Really not an ideal situation there. Now onto pedals and trying to be balanced here, so to speak, because this is a video about a spider power meter. Pedals are universally compatible with almost every bike. It doesn't matter what group set you've got, what chain rings you've got, what chain line you have, you just put the pedals on and go. It doesn't get any easier than that. Installation is very, very simple. You'll get left right balance and additional metrics with pedals such as the Fivero Asioma Pro MX and the Garmin Vectors slash Rallies, both of those having the full suite of Amp Plus Cycling Dynamics. They are an additional cost to activate on this unit here. There's no additional costs with power meter pedals. You don't have to buy chain rings, chain ring bolts, additional tools, or in the extreme, a new crank set and bottom bracket. Pedals just install and away you go. There are two batteries though. However, on the upside to that, typically they both drain at about the same time. Risk of damage for pedals, mm, it's a maybe. They are more externally placed. I'm trying to show you a crank here, but we're just not seeing those pedals being destroyed by people. The Vectors have been around for a very long time in the, well, sorry, the Rally XCs have been around for a very long time, and we're not seeing people destroy those. The Asiyama Pro MXs have been shipping for just over a month now, and again, we're not seeing people destroy them. So risk of damage, I don't think is a thing, but something to note, depending on how hard you ride. On the Fivero Pro MX side of things, keeping on topic, and to talk about a current trend of a product that I've been using for the last 12 months or so, uh, the activation doesn't require you to even register an account. You just connect to the pedals, send them an email address for warranty purposes, and the pedals will just start working. No code to remember or forget. And the Fivero app, much better than the Power to Max app. However, that could change at any time if PowerMax get working on their, uh, their app. Uh, okay, cost-wise for both, focusing on what I've just talked about, the PowerMax Njico and the Pro MX, and really it's almost a wash. The Pro MX Njico mountain bike coming in at, we'll talk in US dollars, 590, and the Pro MX 2 coming in at 756. There's $166 US difference. But factoring in, well, what I had to buy, a uh, Wolf Tooth Drop Stop ST chain ring, which was just over $120 Australian, so around 90 bucks US or so. Uh, the Shimano TLFC41, that cost me around 40 bucks here in Australia to install the Powder Max uh, power meter, plus the chain ring bolts. Plus the time, the sticker price of these don't really reflect what it's gonna cost you to get one on the bike. So trying to remain neutral, they're about the same, but you will need to do the math yourself. Alrighty, with that, that's a wrap on this one, my standalone video on the Power to Max NGCO, which you've probably seen in other videos and you'll definitely see in more videos coming up in the near future. And to be alerted of when those videos get uploaded, make sure you hit subscribe to this channel, hit like if you found this informative, and as always, thanks for watching.